Another thing that I want to do is add more surface area. This is the rudder off the lower bay. And after, when I was using this rudder on, on the hull with the, the little 35 foot, uh, square foot Optimus sail, it, it was fine. But when I put on that, uh, that bigger 50 square foot sail uh, and gave it some wind, uh, then it, it wasn't enough and it needs to come out to about here. I need to add about at least two to three inches, three inches more, so I've got to figure out. It's a solid piece of uh, shaped cedar, red cedar, and uh, I was going to cut off the bottom and make a, uh, a, a tilt-up. And I may, I may make another tilt-up, but I want to start from scratch instead of uh, doing this or, you know, changing this too much. I'll make one uh, out of uh, layered plywood. Uh, that's a, a, a beach ready, you know, tip up. Um, mainly for going up on that uh, Lake of Cheese where uh, uh, you're going to be running aground on either the ramp or some of the other spots there. So I can pull the dagger board out in time, but it, uh, it's hard when you're coming in to pull the dagger board out and reach around and yank the, uh, the rudder up because sometimes they, they don't want to come up easily. And that's a good thing. So let me go ahead and think about this and we'll come back. Well, I think I've got my piece cut and more or less shaped, and that'll give me probably the, the amount of extra uh, surface area I need on the rudder. Uh, it will be set about probably uh, half an inch into the existing rudder, rudder maybe three eighths, uh, and then I will probably take some. Uh, I've got some. Uh, I don't know. It's two mil, and build up along the edges here. Clean, clean all the paint off of here and epoxy on and then fair in uh, the new piece. So I used my sliding square to line, put a line across here along the straight edge. Now I'm going to cut this leading edge off. It'll be about the depth of these holes. Maybe uh, I might drill these a little lower. And then I will edge epoxy that piece I showed you earlier on this and then I'll uh, add some extra onto the side to uh, stiffen it up. There you can see the uh, the edge of it and I guess I'm mistaken this is made from plywood. I thought this one was made out of cedar. Okay, I guess it isn't. Well I have the uh, the dugout made. I took this thing outside. There's no use in creating all that dust inside here, plus I've got the uh, the two other pieces over here paint drying, so now I'll mix up some gel magic and put this in place. I may rough this up a little bit, sand it down before I do the uh, epoxy. That way I won't uh, be disturbing this, this seal along here. I have both sides sanded down, well, rasped down. <laughs> Once I started working on this, I thought, oh, I know what this paint is. This is System 3's LPU. Uh, this stuff is hard as a rock. I have to tell you, you put it on, it doesn't, when you put it on, it doesn't seem like you're putting much on, but when you get about four layers on there, <laughs> you've got quite the, uh, quite the hard shell surface. So it's almost like uh, fiberglass. Well, gel coat covered in if you get it smooth enough, if you can spray it on. But that's kind of dangerous because of the fumes and the little particles. But I'm going to go ahead and sand this now with some 60 grit. And then uh, I think I'll go ahead. Uh, it's still got time today. Uh, epoxy on the, uh, the piece on the edge here and get a step ahead of myself. Well, I got my gel magic mixed up here. And we'll... Fill this area in here. Actually, I'd started out and I had, I thought enough, but I thought this hole's pretty deep. So let me go ahead and windrow this up, and whatever's left, I'll stick in the hole. 
This is all going to get uh, two other pieces on either side will be epoxied in and then the whole thing will be fared in. And you can see the layering here when I do my knack of foils when I stack them up and then this is a, what easy fill it in here the dark material and then there's some uh, uh, quick fare along the edges here for fine tuning. Okay. Yeah. Lots of squeeze out on this side. I also want to be sure that it's in line, I'm not leaning off to one side. I'll have to check that as I come back later in the day. Okay. Call it quits on this part. Well, it is a new day, and uh, actually, I came out yesterday and checked the gel magic, and it's been so warm in here. It's uh, what, 70 degrees inside. It's about 90 something outside, um, but it's it, it pretty much cured yesterday afternoon. So I can take this off. So now what I have to do is cut up some little. Um, this is I think two millimeter. Some scrap I had when I was making rudders or dagger boards out of this really thin stuff and layering them up. And so I want to stick this in kind of over the over the joint to fill up some of the uh, area that will be uh, filled with uh, either easy fill it or quick fare, one or the other. So let me go ahead and cut this down and we'll come back to that. Well I have it test clamped in place and I drew a couple lines so I can get back to them and I th thought just for the heck of it I would go from the high point up in here and down to the trailing edge and it's just absolutely it's perfect. So this will be uh, right at the surface and I'll just have to fill in with a putty knife along this edge and this edge and then up in here and fill in that little triangle. So good, let me uh, mix up some gel magic and we'll put this together. Well I've got it clamped in place and when I mixed up my gel magic I used my little uh, serrated tooth here and just spread it on the back of the, uh, the boards. And uh, there'll be enough moisture in it. I put it on thick enough that it will, uh, like, you know, a lot of times I will pre wet so I'll soak the wood. But this, uh, it's moist enough, it'll do that. Uh, before I put the uh, easy fillet on, though, I probably will put a coat of epoxy on everything before I get around to uh, coating that. So. Well, I have the. Uh, Rudder. Got the sideboards on, and then I put a coat of uh, epoxy on it. I can't remember if I showed you gel magicing uh, this or not. Uh, I just used my, I did, yeah. Uh, clamp them on, and you can see by looking at the bottom here, here's the end of the original rudder, and here's the new part. So here's the halfway point. So I've added probably 50% uh, more rudder than what I had, surface area in the water. So let me go ahead, this I did this yesterday, so the, uh, the System 3 uh, silver tip epoxy is still chemically alive. So I'm going to mix up some um, uh, easy fillet now and uh, fill in this uh, stuff and I'll still have a chemical, chemical, uh, chemical bond. I was just looking at my easy fillet can. I'm getting down to the dregs and it's getting kind of dry on both the uh, part A and part B, so I dribbled in a little bit of A to make it a little more liquid. So, and let's put a little more up right at the start there. And I got my wider blade out.
pretty much straight across from here to here. And when I go down, I'll, I'll get down to a, probably about this edge right in here. I'll have to mix up probably a couple of batches. And then sweep, sweep the corner down here. both sides done now so I will let them set there I should probably uh, put it so that one side doesn't slump away so so I have it rasped down now as much as I want to uh, do and vacuum it up. So let me go get some. Uh, it still has a little bit of. I mean, I could probably leave it, paint it there, but there's still some depressions right along about in here where it's where it was thicker. It went shrank a little bit. So let me mix up some um, quick fare. Actually, I think I still have some slow fare left, and we'll fill that in with fairing compound. Well, I have my. My slow fare mixed up, and I've got <laughs> I still got plenty left. I got the big kit, so it lasts a long time. Except they don't make this stuff anymore. that uh, it gave you some time to work with it before it uh, started curing and giving you a little hard particles in there that would uh, drag uh, little holes along in your finished work. just had my mask on and sanded it down, the uh, slow fare, and uh, I sanded down a lot of the uh, paint here too so I can get ready to uh, go ahead and prime it and then put on another Another layer. I think the paint that I used on this was the uh, the white Orcus white LPU System 3's uh, LPU paint, linear polyethylene or polyurethane. So I'll go ahead and redo that again because that stuff is tough, tough, tough. It's a little expensive, but boy, it's it's tough, and it uh, doesn't really chip very easily either. It, uh, if you've got barnacles and whatever, it'll scratch it, but it won't chip. So let me go ahead and prime this thing. Well, I have the uh, dagger, or the, dagger board, the rudder on the uh, Laura Bay finished, and we added uh, this section on the back end here, and it replaced. I lost about this much on the uh, on the edge, and added this much, so I gained about a 50% uh, surface area 
which was affecting me. The, the old rudder was a little light tacking to the wind. Sometimes it would get overpowered uh, on a weather helm situation, but downwind when the met boom was out quite a ways and a gust would come along, it would swing the transom over quite a bit. Uh, so this should alleviate it. Um, so this will end this little segment uh, on doing this. I mean, you can you can make any kind of changes with uh, you know if you get your your, your epoxy and your gel magic and your easy fill it and all your you know fairing compounds and stuff like that i mean you can make changes which is one of the things i like about playing with epoxy and wood is i mean you can do pretty much anything so we'll uh, we'll wrap this one up now and uh, we'll see you on something else uh i may be doing something with a r testing or re-rigging on um, uh, how to raise and lower the, the running rigging on the gaff rig um so we'll we'll see see you later